The challenge of continuing to use fossil fuels is enormous. We'll need to do it for the next 100 years, but we can't do it the way we're doing at the moment. We must capture as much of the CO2 that we produce from those fossil fuels and store it. The one major mechanism we've got to doing that is to compress it and transport it and store it into a variety of underground reservoirs. If we're going to store carbon dioxide deep underground, we're talking about billions and billions of tonnes, we need to understand all the processes involved with doing that on an industrial scale. How does the carbon dioxide move underground? How can we ensure that it doesn't escape? What happens to it in the long term? All of these research questions are addressed as part of the Qatar Carbonates and Carbon Storage Research Centre, a 10-year $70 million programme funded jointly by Qatar Petroleum, Shell and the Qatar Science and Technology Park. At Shell obviously we're really concerned about the future of energy. About half of the world's oil yet to be developed is in those carbonate reservoirs in the Middle East. The use of this research in understanding CO2 and its storage underground in the carbonate reservoirs is really important to address climate change. Using this research to be able to enhance oil recovery from those reservoirs could make a very significant difference to the amount of energy produced. The Qatar Carbonates and Carbon Storage Research Centre has employed some of the top young academics, PhD students and postdocs, and attracted them to London. So we have a big pool of expertise, but it's very broad. It ranges from geologists who go out to field work, to geochemists who work in the lab, through to physical chemistry experts, through to uh, computational fluid dynamics experts. In the Middle East and in Qatar in particular, the reservoirs are mainly carbonate rocks. And in order to be able to inject CO2 safely into the subsurface of Qatar, we need to have a better understanding of the, the subsurface geology of Qatar. Geology is really key to carbon storage. This means the study of the rocks in terms of the porosity and permeability aspects because this will define how much CO2 we can actually store in there. My focus in the QCCSRC project is on fracture-related dolomitization. In the subsurface, we can find these units of dolomite, which are characterized by different permeability characteristics compared to the limestone. Another area of research is to bring in novel tools, new ways of understanding the history of the formation of uh, the reservoirs and how it changes through times in order to be better able to predict where the best reservoir conditions will be. What we have done specifically in my group is work on a tool called clumped isotopes, which allows you to take carbonates, dissolve the carbonates, measure the resulting CO2 to determine the temperature at which the, the different phases of the, of the reservoirs were formed. By combining this with our understanding of the geometry of the reservoir, we can then build predictive models. If we understand the rocks, we also need to understand the fluids, the carbon dioxide we inject, the resident brine, within the rock. We have pioneered methods where we can look inside the rock with x-rays to examine both the rock structure and the fluids within them at scales of a micron and upwards to core samples that may be up to a metre long. We're trying to understand how carbon dioxide and brine flow through the rocks and how they react chemically with the rocks once that carbon dioxide is injected underground. We do that primarily through an experimental approach. We make observations of what happens when carbon dioxide is flowing through actual rocks at the conditions of pressure and temperature that we see in the subsurface. This unique facility combines high pressure apparatus that allows us to perform those observations in real rock cores at reservoir conditions. My group specifically looks inside rocks at very small scales, at the pore scale, at the micron level. I look at the reaction between CO2 saturated brine which is acidic and carbonate rock. Um, and I take three-dimensional tomographies um, dynamically, so over and over and over again, as we uh, flood this reactive fluid through the rock. And I look at how the rock dissolves and what conditions it dissolves under and how it dissolves under different conditions. We image the processes that would occur during CO2 storage. We look at what will happen in the long term to ensure safe storage and we also develop 
numerical models. We have two ways of uh, disseminating our research, and that's through the academic method where we go to conferences and present and publish papers, but we also want to package our data up into much more useful tools that help the industry be able to predict what's going on subsurface. We're already working in Canada and the UK on, on small pilot scale activities, but if we're really going to address climate change, I think we're going to have to get massive scale, and this project will really help us make that understanding come alive. By 2050, we've got to capture 10 gigatons of carbon dioxide a year to meet our requirements to keep the levels of CO2 in the atmosphere down below 450 parts per million. What we've got to do in order to do that is to utilise all the resources we've got to rapidly develop this technology. The work that we do is allowing us to design safe and effective CO2 storage. If we achieve this, we will be able to move seamlessly and smoothly towards a secure energy future.